Hey there guys, Nolan and Jason here with Plumbing Webmasters. Howdy. Today's uh, title is Horse and Buggy Hitch to Plumber Marketing Pro. So yeah, it, it's a little story of my come up on yeah. the deal. So I, you it's know. That's how you got your, how you got started. Well, I, I've been talking about this a little bit more recently because I don't think I give a, I don't think I give a contract. Look, I got a pink shirt on the button, you know, a short sleeve button on shirt. I don't look, <laughs> I'm not giving off like. You know, contractor vibes. You're not giving blue collar. Per I, currently, you're giving pink color. I don't so. think so. And so <laughs> I want to, you know, I want to represent properly. And I think I, clients like me and because I I have been there, man. Yeah. So when I was, uh, gosh, this was when I was 21. I was kind of, I was kind of dejected from the family business a little bit. And I lived in this, I lived in this really ratty duplex. And I, I actually bought it from a guy named Milner who had like 25 on back in the day. You could actually get into real estate still. Now there was a guy named Carlton Sheets that you remember that old guy that would sell how to. That's buy, before my time in Fort Worth. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I was still over. I don't in know Dallas that he then. was on TV. Carlton yeah. Sheets was on TV. Was Somebody's going to remember the name. He Probably. was on, he was on late night TV all the time telling you how to buy houses. And <laughs> as time went on, more and more people bought houses. But even back then, it's like oh, it felt like it was too late, you know, to get into real estate game. You could still literally, yeah, I know. It was yeah, because I know how much you paid for the duplex. So it compared was, to today, it's hilarious. It was late. This was about 1994, and I'm gonna. This is gonna make sense a little bit, but I'm. I was working for my stepfather and mother in a flooring business. Yeah, just a horrible uh, situation. Fam, horrible family situation. A lot of people can relate to that too. Yeah. You know, yeah. just because your family has a plumbing business or a flooring store doesn't mean... Grow up in the family business, you're kind of expected to work in it. It doesn't mean that you got good family or, yeah. you know, so so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm ousted and I'm mowing lawns and hanging out. I decided before my brother left me there, I got, because he, he got, they gave him my paycheck. And so I'm stuck in this place. We had bought this little duplex for eleven or twelve thousand. I think twelve thousand dollars. That's insane. We gave Milner. <laughs> his name was Milner Duval. I don't know. If he, I think I. I don't know if he's still alive. I doubt it. But he had about twenty five uh, of these rentals, and they were kind of slum stuff, which today is a very gentrified area. Yeah, it's very close to the hospital district in Fort Worth. Right. I was lived off of a street called South Lake Street. And it sounds fancy, but it wasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, the South Lake, the town is fancy. South Lake Drive in near Fort Worth downtown, not so much. It had especially the, uh, the that little vertical board that was like this house was like built in 1900 or something. Yeah, it had that little appearing beam, nasty shotgun on either side duplex, and it had that vertical board that was like two and a half inches. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It just has a certain, you can't really fix it on the exterior. <laughs> you know, it just, you can't really fix the subfloor. You can't really fix that vertical exterior board. It was just a nasty house. Yeah. And it had mice in it. Most so. of those houses over there have been torn down and they put up townhouses. And Not this duplex, I don't think. It's really, still there. It's still there. Yeah, it yeah. Was, yeah, you showed it to me a few years ago. It was yeah, still there. Yeah. So maybe it still is. So out front, and, and, and you know, I was, I was 21 at the time. Before my brother moved out, there was uh, there was this, you, you described it. I don't know how you described the, ob what do you call it? It was uh, a concrete obelisk about obelisk. maybe three feet high. Yeah. yeah, so we were mowing lawns. We were just dirty kids, man, mowing lawns. I had grass and dirt on my shins and knees most of the time. My shoes were green. <laughs> and well, there was this concrete thing out front. And I'm like, Rob, let's get rid of this. This man. thing's in the way. It's in the way. <laughs> I had to weed it around. I mean, this place had a, it had a chain link fence that was uh, four foot tall in the front yard. There was no reason to remove this thing, you know. Like it wasn't a beautiful. It wasn't gonna. But we were just young and strong. And I do remember recall as I was removing it with my brother. I said, "This is some damn nice concrete." <laughs> Cut there. The, this is fine concrete. <laughs> It was get it out of here. <laughs> it was fabulous, and it had a little chip at the top. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. And we looked at it, and it was heavy as hell, man. But we were young and strong. Threw it in the back. He was going to the dump because we had worked on somebody's yard and removed a bunch of shrubs. Yeah, and it, we threw it in the back. And then my brother moved out about a month later. I'm sitting in there, and I was just kind of living off of. And I don't. I hadn't had any alcohol or anything since I was 39 years old. But I was 21 or two. And I lived off of like natural light or bush beer and like 
and like Rotel and uh, Velveeta dip <laughs> and, and, and corn chips. I maybe had some beans in the fridge. Beans if it was a good week. Beans, <laughs> beans that sit in the fridge and I'd heat them up and then I might have like hard boiled eggs. Like I literally lived on that stuff. And some lady knocked on the door and she was in a nicest Mercedes, like super nice Mercedes. She was wearing some little tweed looking outfit with big gold buttons on it and I, her hair was perfectly done she had big big uh, earrings on it's like 1994 yeah she's way that, too that crossover 80s to early 90s style she had yeah. on clunky high heel shoes i and pantyhose on which I, you know you just don't see that anymore like this lady and she knocked on her door on the door she was like super like high class looking super high class this was the hood basically <laughs> And I was in there by myself just trying to rest up because I mowed like eight lawns every day with no, I didn't even have a, a what do you call it? I, I, what, it's a push mower. I can't remember the name. I, I didn't have. I didn't oh, have, it wasn't even self-propelled or anything. Like, well, know, I, just... I could have bought it back then like a snapper lawnmower if anybody remembers them. They went out of business like yeah. a Toro or snapper, but I didn't have that. Yeah. I just, I just bought the cheap stuff, right? So right. she knocked on the door and I said, um, yeah. And back then, back then, by the way, you just opened the door. Nobody, yeah. I, I always open the door. I don't yeah. care if somebody looks. You, you didn't look out a peephole. You, no. didn't bother, you just opened the door. And I didn't care back then anyway, but I don't, it was a bad neighborhood. I opened the door, you know, if I had to fight, I had to fight. That was just, but this lady, <laughs> I didn't, I was like, oh, hey. And she's like, what happened to the horse and buggy hitch? And I'm like, what? The what? The what? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, the concrete post out front. I was like, oh, yeah, we, we got rid of that, you know? And she's like. That was one of the last horse and buggy hitches in Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm like, what? I was like, it's like, you know, it's like, well, yeah. She said, where is it? I said, it went to the city dump about three weeks ago, lady. And I mean, she was indignant and walked off. And, you know, I, I make it sound like I was, my dad's a CPA, but I didn't know what a horse and buggy hitch was. I was out on my own and I was mowing lawns on the side. I didn't know hardly anything. Yeah. You know, and just for reference, these were horse and buggy hitches that uh, wealthy people in the town to the west of downtown Fort Worth right. rode their horse and buggy up and then hooked it up there before heading into downtown. Downtown was not too far away. The gentry yeah. would take their horse and buggy downtown. I still see a few, but she said it was. There's a handful of them left. Yeah, a handful. Yeah. Now the little the little chip at the top was where the little ring went in. I, I know one in town. Where there's a the little ring still on it, but it's still intact. Most of those, a kid or somebody would come by or a horse, and they'd they'd pulled the ring out of it. Yeah, and so it was chipped at the top. But this was like a really heavy thing, very dense. And, and this is like a hundred year old antique uh, item thing that was probably weighed two hundred pounds. Yeah, you know, and maybe maybe <laughs> more. I remember it being like, no, dog, that was heavy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like. But we were 21 strong as hell. This priceless and, antique is really yeah. heavy. Throw it to the dump. And I guess the point in telling the story, I've been nostalgic today because, frankly, I've like I've worked hard for weeks, and I get a you know I tell Jason I, you know, sometimes on a day like today, and I'm happy to be up here. I don't feel bad, but and I had I'm 51. I hadn't drank since I was 39, but I feel like I'm three beers in right now. You know, <laughs> I just do. I don't know if that's being 51. Mm -hmm. Or just working too much, but I feel like a little above. Not not a bad like three beers in like best pool game of my life. You know, <laughs> like normally not good at playing a game of pool, but I'm whooping everybody's butt until I get to five beers. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like so right now I'm clean, I'm good, and I'm like remembering some of these stories. But it reminds me of my come up. I mean, man, I was a I was a punk. You know, and in that same rat hole that I lived in that I gave it back to millinery because I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. And the dude next door paid me like, I don't even remember, 250 bucks a month. He he would feed cats and uh, burritos and stuff that was left over underneath <laughs> it so that the cats would try to eat the mice that was in the place. And so there's cats around. And I, I was raised well before I was cast out yeah. and doing this stuff. Is this the place where you would wake up at night and you could hear... Yeah, those the mice eating the those the foam shoes. Out of your shoes. If anybody wants to know why I work hard, and I talk about this with entrepreneurs. I'm going to make a point for plumbers eventually. I promise you. But these stories are interesting, and I want you to know a little bit about me. I want people to know a little bit about me. But I back then the sneakers that we had had a strip of rubber on the bottom of it. And when that ran out, your sneakers were done. Yeah. And then underneath, on top of that, was foam. 
Yeah. And and the the grass had stained the foam on the sides of the shoes completely green, you know. Yeah. And uh, the rubber was still on them, but it was just a strip of rubber, like like glued onto that foam. And I could hear something at night, but I was naive because I had been raised pretty well. We lived next to a country club in a neighborhood named uh, Tanglewood, next to Colonial Country Club in Fort Worth, and. And then I, my parents got divorced. I was cast out, and I didn't have any. I hadn't. Ha, I have not received one nickel from any family member. And I stayed on a sofa once after some a rat got in the house one time because I just I couldn't sleep. I had a rat as big as my boot, like was sitting staring at me during a cold snap in Fort Worth. <laughs> and it was another old house I was in, and this particular house had a clawfoot tub, but not the type in a beautiful architectural magazine. Yeah, it was just a nasty ass old foot. <laughs> it was just an old tub. It was a nasty. Probably old tub. all the porcelain, most porcelain coming off of it. I'm sure mm-hmm. if it had been refinished and placed in a million dollar home, it'd be fabulous. But here it was just like a, a, a nightmare, <laughs> and so and I couldn't. I had to bathe because it was just that in the middle of the of, of, of the bathroom. Yeah. So the, in the bathroom, the switch didn't work, so it had a little plug in. Uh, I, and I know a lot of my clients have been through stuff like this before. Yeah. And the the subfloor had the pipe coming up to the clawfoot tub, and that oh, had just man. been a circular saw out. And yeah. it was basically just a highway for Norwegian mice, which yeah. uh, I unfortunately know what a Norwegian mouse is. And frankly, they're in between the size of a mouse and a rat. Yeah. And so I went and bought a bunch of uh, mice traps because, mouse traps, because I, I realized what the chewing noise was after about two months because <laughs> I was just a naive kid that never been through this stuff before. And I could see, I, I remember my heel, um, my shoes felt weird one day. And the mice had eaten out so much. Uh, and the, the shoes were right next to the bed. Yeah. Like not more than six feet away. And they'd eaten enough of it to where I realized something was wrong with my shoes. Yeah. And then when I saw that, I realized something was eating my shoes. And then I had pulled open one of the drawers and they were eating, I don't know why I had hot cocoa mix, but they loved that hot cocoa mix. And so I used that for my bait on the mass traps. (laughs) That's why they ate the shoes too, because shoes in that period, I sold shoes. Yeah. In that period, around that same time period of okay. my life, okay, I worked. In oh, athletic, you sold shoes. I, I worked in oh. athletic. I shoe thought you store. said sold shoes, like yeah. the sole of the shoe. No, no. So yeah. I, I sold shoes. Okay, and the foam was polyurethane. Was it? Which is sweet is to it? the taste uh, to mice and rats. A little bit of grass uh, stain in there. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a gourmet meal. Yeah. And in the meantime, <laughs> I, and by the way, this is a shotgun. You know, they called it, this is a shotgun house. That means that there was no, there was just, you walked into the front room, walked into the kitchen, bathroom in the back, one room in the back, one bedroom, yeah. one bathroom. Yeah. Had to keep all my mowing stuff inside, my blower, my weed eater. So the house, would, it didn't smell good anyway, but it smelled like grass and gasoline. <laughs> and so that was all in the front because I can't leave it outside. And we don't have a garage and we're in a bad neighborhood. But yeah. I got up and put out like four, two or three traps. And they started going off, and the mice started screaming. Oh, and I hate that! I hate that! I've I've had that. I used glue traps, but yeah, yeah. When when you're sitting there sleeping, and all of a sudden you hear the the squeal. It was like yeah. little girls being murdered. Yeah, or something. <laughs> it's horrible. I don't want to say it right now, but I, I it, it echoes. I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like. So they were getting hit, but and then I had to go in there and remember as I couldn't flip the switch on, the plug in for that little uh, fluorescent light was not all the way across, but on the other side, and I could hear them thumping around. Uh, so it was obvious that they'd get hit, and then they were thumping around. So they they had moved. I knew in my head where they were located, but they were thumping around, and I didn't have shoes on because I was in bed. My shoes were. You know, the ones that get eaten. And <laughs> and I went in there and had to walk halfway across uh, the bathroom to plug the light in. And then I had a fishing pole because I used to like fishing all the time. If I could find a river or, or pond or something, I'd go fishing sometimes. And, and um, it's just in the Metroplex. But I'd, I'd push, I'd set other traps and push them up and whap them again. I mean, I, I'm a strong enough guy, <laughs> but nobody wants to like stomp on a large thing, you know, like yeah. that to kill yeah. it. And so I pushed other traps up and thumped them. And I mean, I think I killed dozens of mice in about two or three days. I didn't yeah. have any place else to go. Yeah. And so, I mean, I was, I had a car 
paid for them. That was it. And I had a Home Depot card, and I, I had paid for the mowing stuff, and I was on my own. But you know, when the, if you want to if you want to know where, like I I was mad. You even. say a lot in the podcast that you yeah. started out mowing lawns, but you never tell anybody this part of it. Yeah. So yeah, I was just a stepdad that was a POS, and uh, you know, mother that was married again. You know. And she was with her man, you know, I was older. And so that was, that was it. Dad was a CPA, he's still alive, but he was smart and too smart and off doing his own thing. Never made any money. So Rob and I were on our own, my brother. And then I was, I was stuck in there and I felt like I was always angry as a kid for some reason. I don't know why. Like I, if I got beat running, I cried not because I was, I was crying ready to fight mad. And if I, when I got older, I was, I was just angry a little bit. I don't know why. And then when I got a little bit older and got kicked out because I was a bit in court, I don't, I, I, I worked like a dog, but I don't like taking shit from anybody. Yeah. So stepdad didn't like me at all. I was like, screw you, you know? And, uh, he was an ex golden gloves boxer and a, and a hairdresser. Did you know that about him? I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know the hairdresser. You yeah. told me the boxing part. He, he worked at a place, something coiffures. Um, I think it was like <laughs> Richardson coiffures, but his mother was a hairdresser. He learned to be one and he was a short guy. And, um, so he had something to prove, I guess, between all that. So he was yeah. a golden gloves dude. So he's always, you know, throwing around his machismo and trying to be tough guy. And I got kicked out. So, um, but yeah, so I always had a lot of energy to fight. And I guess I, I, I guess it hadn't really gone anywhere entirely, but that's where part of it comes from. Uh, most of our clients, I'd guess all of them, frankly. I'd guess all of them. People, people give too much credit for stuff. They see me sitting here in a pink shirt, you know, working in an air conditioned office. And I've told people before, like my calluses disappeared a long time ago. Yeah. But you know, the the other things did not. You know, the pain of all the other stuff. The emotional calluses. The emotional stuff. I mean, digs deep, and I can dig deep with uh, anger. Just like I can hair trigger, get angry. But it comes from that, and then I use it to do business. But I started, I didn't know jack shit about anything, really, but I was fighting for business. And that same place is where I started. um, I wrote that down earlier. It it was the CBC 9000 by Scutch Electronics. That was the auto dialer. And I used that to get (laughs) more uh, lawn care. Really? Uh, Yeah, yeah. That, that That was the beginning of me trying to market beyond the scope of of a door hanger or an ad. Right. So the CBC 9000 was a old, they had two tape reels and one would play the message and one would, deli- you know, one would record it. Yeah. And most people basically cussed me out and I would listen to it in high speed and I'm like, and I'd rewind it and go, Oh, somebody said something. It was basically like F you, you idiot. And I would, I would leave my, and then every once in a while I was like, yeah, I'll take a bit on getting my lawn mode. So I dialed, I could, I could get an old computer and it would, it would store 2000 numbers at a time and I would get the old Delorme discs. You remember those? Yeah. The phone USA or whatever Delorme discs. And, um, I would put 2000 at a time on and I'd get the, back then the area code or the prefix would tell you what part of town you were in. And I would just, yeah. it would be all nine two fours or nine two ones and it was in a nice neighborhood. Yeah. And so that would go out and go on answer machines. And I started uh, doing the auto dialers there. And later I did, but that was some of my first marketing back then because I wanted to get out of that wretched situation that I was in. I just gave it, I got some lawns from that, motivational to get lawns. And then I gave, uh, and I had some girl that was a telemarketer do some calls as well. But my, my stepdad and mother had her, she was moonlighting. So we, I ran a telemarketing room for my family back in the day and um, Martha was a manager and okay. back in the day, it wasn't, wasn't me by the way, but it was all an all female group back then. This was a long time ago. We hired whoever called right. and, and dialed out. And when I quit, she felt bad for me. She was married with a kid and I said, Hey, I, I'd like to get some lawn care stuff. I was, I was like, no one was talking to me from family or anything. Yeah. And so I, she was down when they found out <clears throat> she was helping me after hours, they made her stop. And that was how, uh, so I was, I was destitute there trying to mow lawns, but I was trying to knocking doors, getting lawns. That was how I started doing other stuff because they made Martha stop calling. 
for right. me. Yeah. So, so you had to find another had way. Had to find another yeah. way. But that was the beginning of my marketing journey. Before that, I was just working in, I had, uh, in the family's flooring store. And so, and then I was on my own entire, I was on my own anyway, since about 17 is a different part of the story, but we were back there for a couple of years because they were having trouble. People don't remember, but this was 1993, four was on the heels of still a horrible economy from the savings and loan debacle stuff. Yep. Especially here so in Texas. Early nineties were, was not a good time to sell flooring. Right. And so, um, but people still got their lawns mowed back then and stuff. So I would yeah. mow lawns. Um, but yeah, that was the beginning of it. But that it started there and I didn't know anything about marketing, like literally nothing. And those auto dollars started working and they led to one of the largest home security companies uh, privately held that ever existed. I owned in Dallas, Fort Worth and Houston, tens of thousands of sales from auto dollars. Right. And everybody said, oh, that uh, I never respond to those things. Every single sale every day would say, well, not half of them. I never respond to these, but you sounded so nice. <laughs> and I would if sell them, and I sold them like <laughs> hotcakes. Yeah. And then we got into digital. And I, I <clears throat> one thing I want to say about all this, if anybody watching all this to this point is that you start somewhere yeah. in business and you well, get, also, uh, I, I think, uh, I didn't, I, I didn't kind of latch on to this. When we talked about it earlier, but, we already, we're always talking about the importance of marketing. And marketing is what got you out yeah. of just mowing lawns and eating beans and Rotel yeah. and having mice eat your shoes. Well, I liked the Rotel <laughs> and Fritos <laughs> and beer, by the way. The, the beans were just sustenance. Yeah. Well, the point is, yeah, yeah. marketing is what got you out of that. And if you're, in a, if you're running a plumbing company now and you're not happy with how it's going, the thing that gets you out of it, yeah. It's proper marketing. It is. So, yeah. So good point. To, long story on that, but I, I, I It's I a good know. story. I've it's always a, liked that story. It's a good story. There's a little more to it here and there, but I was literally there by myself. And I, I gave the duplex back to Milner and I moved into a very clean apartment over by Stonegate. Okay. Which is where the Cullen Davis mansion used to be, which is a Fort Worth story. Cullen, I guess, killed his wife and yeah. like... It was that that had a had acres. Imagine acreage next to Colonial Country Club, right? Yeah, <laughs> and then a drunken oil man killing his wife out in the field. Yeah, of that, what now is just like so many people around there. But anyway, I they had um, he had been indicted, I guess, or one was in jail or something. And then that piece of land, somebody had built some apartments, first apartments over there in that Stonegate area. Okay, and uh, I was in there. And then just started marketing from there and continued. If I had anything to do over again of all this stuff, because I always say when when I say, you know, always people, I, I don't want to ever complain because everyone's. I'm always sensitive to everyone's journey in life, you know. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't care if somebody was born in slums. I was not. I was not. So I'm always thankful. I was actually born, you know, on the right side of the tracks. I'll say. But then things got pretty rough pretty quick. So it was a lot of lessons I learned pretty quickly. And, and, uh, and you know, just I had a pretty good view, though, like low and high. Yeah. And so, um, but when people have problems and have stuff happen, they're all important to that individual. Yeah. And somebody can actually live a whole lot better life or a whole lot worse life uh, and internalize things good or bad. Yeah. You know? you're, you, whoever you're talking about, their lowest point is their lowest point. Right. That's the lowest point as far as they have a reference for, because they've never had. They can worse have than worse that. than that and use that as energy to right. get going, or they can take that and just let it beat them down. Right. You know, I was always a fighter on stuff. So when you're, if I if I had to do anything over again, it's just like to fully participate. And one thing, it, it really drives me nuts. Like. I was listening to Gary V um, this morning or last night. I've kind of picked him up on TikTok recently, and he's always spewing about something, trying to give advice. And I, I realize it's curated on it, but I like a lot of what he says. But he, he, you know, he's he's a he's a social expert, yeah, you know, those social yeah. media expert, and he's talking about forty, fifty, and sixty year old dudes now, guy kids that are teens, twenties. They're, they're just automatically better at all this stuff. 
but they don't own businesses. You know, we talked about this. Right. So they don't tend to own anything, and most of them don't get synergized to the point that that marketing outreach will actually equal money. Some of them do. Gary V clearly has uh, mobilized and made a lot of money with it. But the 40, 50, 60-year-olds, I'm going to say 30s too. Yeah. Most of our clients, if you're a contractor in your 30s, 40s, 50s, you're not a social media marketing expert. Generally not. Otherwise, yeah. you're not a contractor. Yeah. You went into a different line of work, right? So if you're there in that place and you're not taking advantage of it, hit Gary V. the point was is how sad it is that the older generation that has skills to do something isn't participating. And in my opinion, going to get run clean over coming up. Yeah. Because it's all those kids are getting older now and they're going to start doing other stuff. And then all these older guys, I'm talking 30, 40, 50, which I don't know. Our average client's probably a 40 year old dude. Probably. Right? Yeah. So we get, but if you're a 50 year old guy, 30 year old guy, and it doesn't matter where you are on this journey, if you don't go all in and try to do something and, and you don't kind of figure it out, at least go in and get the piece that you need or the pieces that you need. It's rough out there, you know, yeah. very rough. You can have your all your credentials and get certified, get licensed, and just really have, not have a good life, you yeah. know. It, uh, it, but, I mean, this stuff can look, like, confusing as hell. And it can just, you can get into a mindset of, oh, this is all BS, I don't want to mess with it. Yeah. If my 82-year-old mother can master her iPhone and master the use of hashtags yeah. and Facebook. Has she? Yes. Oh, wow. she's, I, mean, nice. I mean, she's she's not trying to be an influencer or yeah. anything. She could, but, though, I mean, at 82. Yeah, yeah. She, she connects with all kind of family and friends and keeps track of people all over the world. And if she can do that, you can do this. Yeah. You, you can master marketing. It's important to start and to start somewhere. And, and to, you know, a plumber needs... Uh, high-end basics, essentials, right? Yeah. They need the essentials, which is the website, Google business profile, and then signaling of that. Right. That probably isn't enough, but that starts a relationship and it starts up with uh, getting verified and you start the trust with Google of experience, expertise, authority, and trust. And then you do additional signals. You pay somebody like us to help you with it. And if you really go all out, you can do more. But yeah. then you have to participate more and do like some social media yourself and some other things. But you have professional services help you with part of it. Right. Now, I will tell you, as uh, this is another lesson I'll give people, because I assume that most of my peers and entrepreneurial friends that are contractors that I help have had similar stuff happen to them that I had. Oh, absolutely. Most of them. Yeah. I didn't trust anybody. And so... I And as I've gotten older, I try to hang out with uh, professional people and get help and, and more organizational stuff. And I don't care if it's uh, a, a country club or a church. Like, I wouldn't do anything. And I fight the system on it because I didn't trust human beings from stuff I'd been through. Yeah. So you'll find a lot of our guys like that. And I'm telling you for the same reasons. I don't know their story. But whatever. They're not going to have the same story, but they've got something they've got a like rough story. it. They almost all come from underneath. Start a business because times were rough and they fought to start the business. But but why they start the business because times were rough and whatever times were had to do with other humans. They don't trust anybody. Right. And then they don't get professional services and help. Yeah. And so professional services like plumbing webmasters and data pens and dudes like us that help hardcore. And most of the guys that get going are not as broken not as messed up, and at some point in time say, I'm going to do everything I can possibly stink and do. Yeah. And then use all of that angst and anger or whatever happened to fight and get forward. But at some point in time, you have to get a little bit of help. You have to look up and say, I can do this, and then I'm going to do it. I'm not going to judge everything or everyone. And, you know, that that I would do. Now, I was way too much of a lone wolf, like way too much. Always fought, did well. But yeah. uh, as I get older and do stuff, I mean, we got a team where kind of, and I, Jason knows it right now. I mean, I, I just kind of, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm reinventing right now, right? Yeah. And, and so some of these stories are coming up again for me. I hadn't told these stories in like forever. I yeah. Mean, I, you, I, you I've know, heard some of these years ago, but you kind of got away from talking about that portion yeah, of your life. I mean, you go, I'm going through, a, we're going through a lot right now. You too, yeah. the business, and we've got people up here and, 
I'm trying to, you know, one thing I tell you too, is that I'm, I'm dealing with clients a lot differently. You know, I'm yeah. trying to help. I mean, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I say it's, we've always been trying to help just to make that clear. We have, but, but I'm trying to, I think what we've discovered yeah, go ahead. is they need the help they need is not just keywords on Google. Correct. It's not just SEO. You're right. It's not just data. Pace. It's rooted in this story. Yeah. 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 It's rooted in this story. So it, it's, it's, yeah. it's also direction right. and understanding what needs to be done and just as importantly, when it needs to be done. Yeah. And when somebody didn't have the silver, nobody that had the silver spoon runs a plumbing business. Right. Nobody runs a lawn care business or got into home security or auto dials people with a CBC 9000 from Scotch Electronics. Right. Nobody does that. So if you, and now private equity firms buy up plumbers and stuff, but if somebody's starting a plumbing company, so somewhere in that they need, you know, they need, need peers that have been there that can help keep some on track and like almost in a coaching format as part of the service and connect with someone like myself that had been there before. So what I'm, and I, what I try to do now is stay in more touch with people, but we've always had a good team here, but I'm personally working more and I'm a little loopy today from it, by the way, but I'm grateful and happy to be here. Right. And it's reminded me of some nostalgia and some other stuff, you know? So, and, and part of this is just me helping, uh, our clients that may have had other stuff happen. Some of the biggest, uh, stuff that happens is that we, we help people stay on track. Yeah, to to understand what it is, because as Jason was saying earlier, it is confusing out there uh, to to not to know what's happening. And I th- it took us a long time to realize that that's what some people needed help with. Uh, all humans, yeah, you know, but but most of these dudes, you know, need help with this. And then there's such misdirection and bad propaganda out there. Yeah, ever there's a lot of charlatans, cheats, and thieves trying to get in your pocket, and selling you paid, and selling you this, and claiming they got the one hit wonder, and you're being misdirected and like, oh, I'm going to go over here and do this or do that. Yeah. But most of these guys have had enough stuff happen that it's hard to stay on that track, and then they wonder how the guys got. I, I tell you, the guys that are on track has to do with that old Joe Buck Wild story we're telling. You know that guy. That guy that just markets, you know, yeah. he's, that's he, his sole focus is marketing sales, marketing sales. He, he, at least he, he, by God knows that. Yeah. And, and if I had to, if I had to drill something into your head is that you're a digital brand and they read your digital signals. And if you limp in and just throw up a website, I'm shocked at this point in time that all that I'll see a plumber and they, with all I'm, I'm going to back up and say, so 20 years ago, you could have had yellow pages, direct mail, money mailers and Valpac, radio, TV. Maybe billboard, a billboard. Billboards, yeah. direct mail, a door knock, word of mouth, a, a rap. Back then, they didn't have good raps. You just, yeah. you just put a bad one on your door and park it at the church. You got one of those stickers with your name. On the door. Yeah. And that's it. And all the stuff that I just mentioned, almost all of it, was really expensive. And now yeah. you can go onto Google, Bing, and AI takes it from the same place, and you can put up a website and work on digital brand signaling, mapping, reviews, and you could get onto Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Shorts, uh, all this stuff. Yeah. And they do nothing. And they do and, almost nothing. And it's sad because yeah. the the cost of doing what we're doing now is so much so less. So much less. I mean, yeah. j- just getting... Door hanger, proper door hangers, yeah. uh, printed and cut. If you did them in color yeah. back then, Jesus, it, it, it thousands and thousands of dollars. To do Someone that. was arguing with me about mailers the other day, and I'm like, okay, fine, but but the, they will not take their digital brand and send regular branded signaling in, right? And add other components of digital branded signaling to their brand, yeah. And put up a website and basically not touch it or spam it. Bad, basically no work or bad work on the website and then get some reviews and leave this. It's just like riches on the table, gold on the table left. It costs less to do it. And if you do it right, it blows away the, all the collective stuff. I hit that. That's going to make a loud bump. Uh, (laughs) The, all the stuff you mentioned a minute, a minute ago, the billboards and everything else, a properly curated digital brand will blow all of that away for less money. 
Yeah. In fact, the other stuff will bankrupt you. Yeah. And not yeah. work. And so there's so much available and there's so much misunderstanding of it. And when you literally look at all the stuff that used to work and then you look at the stuff that you could do now and you realize that almost every plumber out there is doing almost nothing. Yeah. And, or if they're doing something, there's a really good chance they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. So what for me personally, and I, you know, what we do here, us having a podcast about this is different than what a plumber would do to go to market. Yeah. So what we do to come to you as a plumber for the plumber to find us is different than what the plumber will do to go to the consumer that's looking for plumbing repair. But there's a lot of stuff that can be done and almost all plumbers are doing almost nothing and misunderstanding what could be had. Yeah. And so I'm sure my life and my uh, friends and peers life and, and uh, clients lives, I mean, why not fight like a madman and show up for everything possible? get in the game and get like the, the rate, the rate of return on investment and this stuff is unbelievably cool. Yeah. Now for me personally, at this point in time, I've decided to just throw off everything and we're all in on everything. Yeah. So I, I know I'm almost anything and everything currently we're going to be going on to, and what we'll do with this is not only grow the plumbing webmasters, data pens and Nolan Walker brands, but we'll also test them all for the plumbers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So well, we, we were interviewing uh, someone earlier today to help. The, they're hopefully going to come in and help us with our social media outreach because we're always trying to improve. Right. And they made a suggestion yeah. of a platform that we're not sure about. And you kind of asked a couple questions and you said, we'll try it. And I said, just just to be clear, we'll try absolutely anything we'll try to see anything. if it works. So, so for our brand, we're about to be on you know, some stuff prolifically and some of the stuff we weren't on, some we were, but Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. You're going to be seeing a lot of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> LinkedIn, Twitter. Yeah. I think I said six. Um, we might add the one that she had recommended. Um, and then we were hammering it in lives and podcasts and shorts and this and that. I mean, anything yeah. we can do, we're going to do. And every once in a while, I've learned that it's just worth doing it. And I want to say something else before we kind of wrap up. I, I hope I hope it wasn't too personal on it. But, um, you know, I realized at this point in time that I might say that I work a 40-hour week, right? I think for sure I used to work a 60-hour week. I know I did. Yeah. A clean 60 or 70 or something. And then I worked like, you know, 60 and then 50 and... I don't think I work a 40 hour week, although when, cause even when I'm at home and I'll call you up here, like that whole morning routine and stuff that I'm doing, it's just like, I'm running, I'm, I'm replaying everything. Yeah. No, when it, I don't care what you're doing. You're probably thinking about this business I know, at any given I know. time. <laughs> and, and these guys are too. They're thinking about their plumbing business. And I want to make a point about it. So if I'm up here or if I'm at home and this narrative is running in my head, and you know as well, we talk about basically two things. Well, we talk about a few things, but it's either besides marketing, right? And marketing, service, and clients. But the nature of the conversations that we'll have is either success or failure. Right. And I'm telling you that most business owners, me included, will sit around and worry about not earning enough money. But if enough money is being earned, then the nature of the conversation changes. Yeah. You're going to spend 40, 50, 60 hours working. You're going to spend another 30, 40 hours thinking about it every single week. And if you don't participate in everything you could be doing, you're going to spend the same time no matter what, but the narrative and the nature of what's thought about off time before you go to bed, waking up in the mornings, waking up in the middle of the night and thinking about it again. You, yeah. your, your option is to think about the success of your business and how you expand upon it or to worry about the failure of your business. Yeah. Um, I would I would really encourage you to step out, take the gloves off, quit any negative narratives, and say, by God, I'm going to put forth and send digital branded signaling and get my plumbing company as high up as I can get it. Let's start here and see what's next. We will help you with what's next so that you don't screw your brain up about it and help you get dominant in the marketplace. We've got plenty of dominant clients around the country. 
you can call us. You know, somebody calls us normally by the time somebody finds us, they've already been on a soul search and tired yeah. of getting screwed around. Hopefully they've seen a couple of these podcasts and yeah. said, oh, yeah. It's rare that, that somebody calls and says, I'm starting out and I'm going to start with you. Yeah. Most people try and go, I'm starting out. I'm going to try this thing that is so cheap. I can't believe it's true and it's not true. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then you find the next thing, the next thing, and then you go forward. Um, I heard a podcast with a guy, you know, that I've been following named Albert, and he was talking to somebody. He was talking to a plumber um, yesterday. The guy spends seventy five thousand to a hundred thousand. He's in, uh, I think, Orange County area somewhere. Yeah. And on paid ads, you know, oh, per, like like monthly per month, Good per month. God. And the reason I bring him up, I don't know who he is. Uh, yeah. I, I love Albert, and I love hearing stuff like this. So I was listening to his plumber, and the plumber's successful. But he spends close to six figures every month on paid ads, and he was happy about it. And he was talking about it. He said it's all an auto pay, and he just he just does it and pays for it. And the guy was successful. He, in fact, he paid seventy five hundred dollars to do this podcast with this guy, <laughs> and and he'd grown up in East LA, and but he's a cool guy, cool plumber. He spent a fortune, and Jason knows what I'm going to say. But I mean, you guys need to like exploit organic as much as humanly possible. You can build yeah. a digital brand and show up without paying for every click, and it's eighty percent of the clicks on a on a contractor. The map placement, the keywords that show up, the reputation reviews, and the multiple platforms, Google Bing. If he put AI. a tenth of that money, yeah, he heck, a twentieth of that money into going after organic, he would be. He had some organic going, but. Yeah. It should have expanded in a different way. Yeah. It should yeah. have gone out to media, to social media, if it had to expand beyond Google. Most of these guys have never participated in the big show and actually been up in ranking. Yeah. And once they go up in ranking, life is great. And then you can expand from there. But to actually go into 100,000 before continuing on to other things is... I mean, he couldn't even have that much to spend if he wasn't successful at some yeah, level. Yeah, So had, kudos to him at that, sure. you know, at that level. Absolutely, he was doing good. He had, yeah. He had 15 trucks on the road. But, but it, he could, you know, we, we've known guys who just used organic and got the 50 trucks on the road. We do. We so. do. And I will say this, at least he, he's doing it in pain and moving forward. Yeah. This guy was not complaining. Yeah. And he was, and he was doing something, but you need mentoring about how to spend the money and which way to proceed forward. Right. And so we're here to help with all of it, man. And I've been there and done that. I feel like. And I have had multiple contracting businesses. I even owned an auto repair shop. Hated that one, but I owned one. Lawn care, flooring, and uh, home security, and an auto repair shop. Um, I thought I was tough until I dealt with the auto repair guys. No, no, no ultimate hate on it, but it was a, it was a pretty rough group of guys yeah. to work with. A lot harder than a, a home security technician, you know. But... Um, yeah, anything else on this stuff? Any no. other thoughts? No, I love that story. I'm glad yeah, we finally, I, finally told it to the yeah, wider I, audience. I don't know if it's therapeutic at this point. It's an old story, you know. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm having one of those days to where I'm glad to be in here. I'm just my, There's something different about me today. But um, made some calls to some clients before this. Didn't really get to talk to anybody. But I'm enjoying speaking to these guys. Yeah. Um, Used to we just we sign on people and we have a whole staff here, but I, I try to stay in touch with all the clients and um, I'm working more because of it. But it is more rewarding. Yeah. In there. It's your yeah. peer group. Yeah. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, it is my peer group. I don't think, like I said, I almost feel bad wearing a pink shirt, but I the, <laughs> <laughs> you're really fixated on the pink shirt. <laughs> I don't. Like I said, I don't think I look like a contractor, but I mean, I just uh, that's that's you look like a golfer. I do. I mean, I, it's a golf shirt. It's, is it? Pretty much. This is that uh, one that was on uh, the butter cloth that was on Shark Tank. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a stretchy uh, cotton fiber, which yeah. I'm a biohacker, uh, and anybody that's 50 should be, but this is a cotton fiber, so I feel comfortable. That's why I wear these. I, I don't normally wear a button-down short sleeve, but it's that butter cloth. I forget it was Robert, maybe that guy, I forget his last name, one of the, one of the sharks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. He wear, he's a little older, but he stays kind of fit. And these are those more form-fitting ones, but they're made out of cotton, 95% cotton. So that, that's why I wear this. It's part of my biohacking. A lot of stuff you'll see me doing, like this Whoop Watch and other stuff, you notice it's, it's biohacking stuff. Anyway, guys, call us when you're ready. I'm Nolan, Jason here, Plumbing Webmasters. Like and subscribe. Got questions? Call DM us, whatever you want to do. You can still talk to me. I don't know that I'll ever stop talking to people. 
I doubt it. But um, right now, you every time you me. ever tried it, it hasn't worked. I, I don't <laughs> mind it anymore. I used to try to get a. I used to try to change the nature of the business. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know that I'll ever change it again. But I truly have enjoyed uh, kind of connecting on you know on a continual level with the clients. Make right. sure they feel cared for, and make sure that the client stays on track because you know the client will get off track or get wooed by some jackass calling on the phone or something and mess up all their marketing. I mean, we've seen it too many times. I'm talking to a guy right now that's coming back to us and was paying like triple, got screwed around and like just a whole mess, oh. you know, but it was anyway, a whole different story. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Call, give us a call. Take it easy.